Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial. This is going to take you through the process of creating a simple neon sign inside Photoshop. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the bricks image that we've previously used in a workshop three of the Photoshop Toolkit Assets um, series that we've been doing. So I'm going to right click on the bricks image and I'm going to come down to open with and then Photoshop. And that makes sure that Photoshop opens our image as the as the same resolution and the same image size as that source image. So at the moment the bricks are as we left them in the previous workshop uh, but they're a little bit too light to suggest that this is night time. So what I'm going to do is just unlock this layer and then I'm going to create a new layer on top of it and this is going to be our lighting layer to just dim the lights as it were. And to do that I'm simply going to create a gradient fill. So I'm going to come to the paint bucket tool and make sure it's gradient tool I'm going to make sure it's a radial grain gradient tool at the top and I'm going to make sure it's going from kind of uh, black to white like so but in fact actually I want it to use these colors down here so as I swap these over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it goes from about a dark gray to black because I don't want it to be too uh, light this shot and let's switch those over so let's go back Let's make sure it's this gray to black. Let's pick it up there. I'm just going to drag out from the center out to the edges like so. And then what we left with, I might not drag that far. Let's just undo that with control Z. Just drag out to about there. That's slightly better. And we've got this kind of very subtle gradient. And what I'm going to do is tell this layer how to communicate with the layer below. I'm going to use a blending mode that darkens up the pixels below it. So I'm going to use this multiply option. And that's basically dimmed the lights a bit. And then we can use the opacity control to throttle that in however we like it. So let's just keep it something like that for now. Okay. So that's just one way of kind of lighting a layer below. So we've got these two. And what we're going to do is I'm going to shift click both of them and we're going to create, create a group from them. So with them both selected I'm going to drag them onto this little folder icon at the bottom of the layers and it creates a group. I'm going to call this group background. So with that created we're now going to create our text for our neon sign. So I'm going to select this T tool and the font um, is in the folder for this video and it's called Beyond which is a, like a neon font that seems like it's got separate tubes. I'm going to click in the center. I'm going to type the word neon like so. And I'm not going to pick a font size. Five is quite nice. Let's move this roughly to the center like so. And there we go. Now when we created that text, it created it based on the text color. So let's go back to our T. It was this gray color here, which was our foreground color that we left from our gradient. So let's double click the T on the layer so we can edit it. And let's pick the color up here. I'm going to put, pick something garish. Something like a garish blue. Like a neon blue or actually a magenta. Let's go with a really bright garish neon magenta. There we go. Let's press OK. And that's the beginnings of our sign. So we've got this layer is going to be our sign. What we're going to do is now start to give it a bit of soft ambient magenta light coming from this sign to start the lighting effect. So to do that, we're going to duplicate this text layer. So we're going to drag it down onto the new layer symbol to duplicate it. I'm going to double click on its name and call it light. I'm going to drag it below the text layer. So we've got our text layer on top and then this one underneath. And nothing seems to change because they're both exactly the same. Select the light layer. And what we're going to do is just simply blur it to make it look like it's glowing. So let's come to Gaussian Blur. Convert to Smart Object. And then you can up the intensity of how much light. So let's make it quite hot and intense so let's keep it quite tight there that looks quite good about 20 that'll do is and 
then if we wanted to make that glow a bit more intense, we could duplicate the light layer again, drag it down, it'll duplicate it once more. And we could double click on the very bottom duplicate on its smart filter. Let's double click Gaussian Blur or Gaussian Blur. Let's make that bigger. And by making it bigger, we're kind of layering up blur on top of blur to give it this intense kind of fall off of light. And again, you could keep building on that by dragging another one down, dropping it onto here to duplicate it. Go to the very bottom one of your duplicates, double click the Gaussian Blur and make it slightly bigger again. Yeah. And what we're doing is creating this fall off effect. So it's starting to look a bit more neon-y. But these don't actually look like tubes. We could stop here if we were doing like a motion graphic sequence and we would just wanted the impression of neon, but we want to give it a sense that these are actually made of tubular glass. So let's come to our top neon text layer. Let's duplicate somewhere in the gray. And we're gonna play with some of these options. So first off, we're gonna give it a bit of a tight drop shadow setting. But straight away that distance is too far. So let's play around with some of these settings. So th what we're trying to do is give it a bit of a dark edge to look like it's got a bit of fall off around the tube. So I'm gonna change the intensity to about 50 of the shadow. I'm gonna make the angle about 120. So let's type in about 120. There we go. Now I'm gonna make the distance really tight to the tube, so currently it's quite a lot. So I'm gonna make that five. I make sure the spread is zero, because I don't want to spread it out at all. And I'm gonna make the size quite small as well. And what that's doing is tightening itself up around the edge of the tube. Okay, uh, I've got anti-aliasing switched on, make sure that's switched on, and we've got this linear contour. So that's a start. We're now going to come to the inner glow to make it look like it's glowing. So let's click on this inner glow. Let's make sure our blending mode is screen because we know that brightens it up. So whatever color we've got here, it's brightening it up with it. I'm going to make sure the opacity, I don't know, about 75 is quite natural like so. I don't want any noise. I want it to be softer in its technique, and I'm gonna use this gradient instead as well. So it's got just a slightly more organic fall off from an intense white to zero. So it's kind of falling off from the center. And you might want to then put your opacity up a little bit just to increase the intensity of that. We're gonna use this softer technique for the fall off, because if we use edge, it's at the edge. So let's use it in the center, and let's make it softer, not precise. So we want this softer fall off, more organic fall off. We want zero for choke, and then the size. And this thing, let's tighten that up a bit so it's a bit more intense. So let's go something like eight, maybe. There we go. And let's just have a look. The range, 50%. Yeah, this is all looking quite nice now. Yeah, so we're getting this fall off. Then we're going to come to our inner shadow just again, give it a bit more form and tighten that tube up a bit. So let's press on the inner shadow word, um, the word here. Let's make sure it's multiply, so we're darkening things up, the opposite to screen. Let's make sure the opacity isn't too dark. So let's bring that down a smudge to 40%. Again, 120 degrees, let's keep this consistent, the lighting and shadow direction. Uh, distance, yeah, about five. So if it's not five already, make sure it's five. Choke zero, I don't want any choke on there. And about size five, I just want, I don't want it too, too shadowy. And let's come down to our, make sure it's anti-alias, make sure it's just a linear contour like this and make sure there's no noise. Lastly, we just need to give it a sense that it's got a bit of a shine to it and it's a bit more tubular. And we're gonna use this bevel and emboss. So let's press that word, bevel and emboss. And let's work with what we've got here. So we're gonna pick smooth as our option and use inner bevel instead of outer bevel, because that's not quite right. So inner bevel. Let's make sure the calculation is smooth so it rolls off, not chisel hard or chisel soft. We want it to be smooth. It gives it a tubular shape. 
the depth again you can dial this in look and it makes it a bit more tubular if you do that perhaps we don't want to destroy it completely that kind of works the size again let's go with something like five yeah we can get something that's very tube like now um, and let's have a look size three and I think my soften yeah this softening thing basically softens off the roll off you can see that there okay uh, 120 degrees again let's keep that consistent 30 degrees for the at, uh, altitude um, anti-alias let's keep that going now the highlight in the center we can bring up the highlight opacity look of the edges so I think 75% is quite subtle it seems quite a default naturalistic kind of value for both the shadow of this inner part of the tube and the highlight screen and multiply are a standard blending modes for both brightening things and darkening things and that's looking quite nice we're getting there okay so we've got this intense we might want to come back to our inner glow and maybe put the opacity up a bit just to kind of counter what we've done just there okay let's press ok and we've got our tubes so we've got this kind of incidental light that we've built just here with all these intensities again if we think any of these lights are too bright on the wall then we can come to each one and throttle them back a bit you know if we feel like they're too intense with this trans opacity option the good thing is we can come back and adjust these anytime we want because we're working this non-destructive way okay so that's our sign built so we can literally just again select the neon and the lights and let's drag them down into their own own folder like so and we can call this neon okay now what we also want to do is draw the wire that links these neon tubes together because otherwise they're not powered so i'm going to create one more layer at the top i'm going to call this cables and we're going to get the pen tool just here so we can draw a stroke or shape we're going to make sure it's shape as an option up at the top we're going to make sure there's no fill so let's make sure this red line is through it because we don't want to fill this shape and let's make sure it's stroke uh, and what we want to do is pick a color that's close to the color of our neon so say up here we want to draw something slightly dimmer and darker to denote that it's like a gray cable that's being lit slightly by this magenta color and let's pick a thickness for the cable let's say eight pixels maybe again it's all relative and you can dial it in afterwards if you're not quite happy and what we're going to start to do is draw our cable so what we do is we click where we think the cable might come out the wall so maybe here click and then we click again and drag to create a curve and then this can go into the tube here and then we can click up again like so and let's click up here and let's click down here let's click up here and maybe let's do a little curve over the top like so let's click down here click across to the E and let's click again a little curve into the O and then let's click kind of round the O and as you click and drag it creates an arc like so and then let's maybe click across to the N up to here down to here up to the top and let's click out an arc at the top to kind of arc the cable back into the wall like so and if we press on the move tool you can see this cable that we've drawn and we can kind of come in and we can move any of these points about uh, if we're not happy but there we go so let's drag the cables below the neon, neon sign and what you can see now is the cables look like they're, they're there but they've got no form again so what we can do is just double click 
and tick all the last options we had and you can see that that cable is now taking on some form so drop shadow we used before we use the inner glow we use the inner shadow and oh that stroke in a shadow and we've now got something that looks like a cable okay there we go and that's this maybe just a little bit too bright so let's take the inner glow down a bit there we are and if we still think it's too bright we can select the cables layer come back to the pen tool come to our options here and just darken that down ever so slightly and that just darkens that off so we can keep coming back and playing with this until we're happy there we go so we have our cable just here in fact I might just give that a bit more saturation let's come back to our magenta because I think something about there there we go right so that's our cable done the other thing we want to do, we just want to make this look like um, uh, the cable um, and the neon sign are lifted away from the wall. So we need to add additional drop um, shadow. So what I'm going to do is drag the cables into the neon sign folder and make sure the cables inside that folder are below all the other layers, like so. The other thing that's bugging me as well is that the, the light is going to be in this folder and we're going to add a drop shadow to this whole folder so the cables and the sign look like they're lifted from the wall but I don't want the light to be impacted by that so the light just here I'm going to select all three of these and drag them out of this folder okay so now they sit they need to be sandwiched between the, oh, the neon sign and the background so I've dragged them into the background folder so now they're in the background folder and they're above the lighting okay and we're going to come back to our neon sign folder we're going to double click on the whole folder which has our cables and the the, the neon sign itself inside we're just going to pick drop shadow and you can see it's already got a drop shadow and we're going to move its distance up a bit so it looks like it's a bigger distance from the wall like so and you can see the wires are casting a shadow and the sign itself We can play around with the size just to soften that off a bit. Actually, let's take the spread right down. Let's get the size up a bit and maybe the distance up a bit. Let's change the angle slightly, like so. And the bigger the distance, the further from the wall they will seem. There we go. And then we could bring the opacity down a bit if we wanted to. Like so. And we can keep playing with that until you're kind of happy. There we go. And that looks like that neon sign is possibly sitting alongside that wall. One last thing, we just need to paint in a little bit more light here. So I'm just gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna put it between the background and the neon sign. I'm gonna cause this lighting. And I'm just gonna simply get my foreground color and pick my magenta. I'm gonna make sure I've got a brush and I'm gonna make sure it's a big soft brush. Let's pick one of these big soft brushes. I'm gonna use my parentheses keys to make it bigger or smaller. I'm gonna make it quite big. We're going to make sure its opacity of the brush is really low. Then what we're going to do is just click slightly different places just to give a sense that this is lighting up the environment like that. And let's change its blending mode to something like soft light. So you can see we're just getting this slight random neon glow to things and we can just chip away and paint away at this just to give a better impression and there we go there's our neon sign and that could be any color you want it to be and because this lighting is sitting on its own layer we can just 
dial it in until we're happy. And there's our neon sign completed. Um, and if you spent a bit more time dialing in all those layer options, you'd get something slightly different. But in principle, that kind of works. So I hope that's helped you. Uh, and that's how to create kind of specific things to do with neon inside Photoshop. Thank you.